Microsoft, Mr. Softy, Big Microsoft. I can't think of any other nicknames for him. They report earnings after the bell. Spencer Jacob, ahead of the tape columnist, is here with a preview of it. Microsoft is a very interesting company to Spencer Jacob because it, it is a complete cash cow. I mean, they, they just print money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the stock is dead in the water. It's been dead in the water for, for a long, long time. For a long time, right. yeah. And I mean, I, I made the point to uh, to one of my colleagues, like, you know, this, this, this company, if you just project its cash flows for the next few years and then they hold steady and don't grow further, it could, in theory, well, you know, wouldn't happen, mm -hmm. could buy itself back over about eight and a half to nine years. Sounds Which, like a good thing. Yeah, and, and, you know, and what he said is like, well, that was the same story five years ago or seven years ago. And it, actually, it wasn't. It's, it's much cheaper today than it was then. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, you, it's, it's really been under the radar. And people look at Microsoft through the prism of where it was five or ten years ago. And they think, well, sort of, you know, <laughs> not, not the best products. And they have this kind of dying monopoly through controlling mm -hmm. the dominant operating system and that's all going to be gone and smartphones and tablets and everything else will kill them and that's that's really not accurate. So what are investors looking to see? What will get them excited about this stock again? Well, I mean, I, I think looking at these earnings, they're not going to get, you know, we're expecting 58 cents a share. It might beat by a cent or so because uh, PC sales actually, they, they were hurt by this, this Thai flooding mm. and uh, shortage of hard drives. It might be a little better, but that's neither here nor there. That doesn't really matter. It's down from 61 cents a year ago, which is, you know, distorted anyway. What they're looking at it, for the catalyst is coming later this year, and that's Windows 8, and that's the much anticipated operating system that's going to, well, it's a new operating system, which is always good for them, but it's going to tie together uh, all kinds of devices. It's really more of a tablet-based operating system. It's good for smartphones, good for tablets, and good for PCs and other devices, and, and that, you know, has the potential to, to make Microsoft much more relevant and much more competitive in this, this new world where everyone's kind of ridden them off. Right, because we know, you know, now you have a situation where I think it's tablets and mobile. They're selling more of those devices than they are PCs. Right. The world's changing. Microsoft, let, let's just be frank about it, they're not cool. Like, right. that's the thing, right? They're not cool. Their software is buggy. I, I, you know, right, everyone yeah. hates it. But they, for the longest time, they were dominant. I mean, you didn't right. have a choice. Now you have a choice. I, I have to think long term, though, that this company has a lot of operating challenges. Is that yeah. a way to put it? Well, the thing is that you know that that's a little bit of a misconception what you said because you're looking at it through the, the prism of uh, of a consumer using you know who is forced to really through at least through your workplace. You might not use it at home. Mm -hmm. Use Microsoft products. You mm -hmm. have to use a Microsoft operating system. They've done a lot of things. For example, in enterprise software that you know that you and I don't don't see that have been very successful very profitable. They've bought a lot of companies. They, you know, they've done quite a few things right that are outside of the consumer sphere. Now Windows 8 is their chance to, to make a big splash and be really competitive, you know, not dominant, but really competitive mm -hmm. in the consumer space again and have a really compelling product. Now what if, what if they fall on their face? It's happened before. They've come out with bad products. Oh, Vista, Windows 7. You, right? Windows 7, one, right? right? Yeah. Yes. Well, Windows 7 actually is not bad. I mean, Vista, you know, before that. Vista. Vista, that was right. was a disaster. Right. right. Windows and, 7 was and, better than Vista. Right. And they, the thing is that they can survive that. They're not betting the company on it. They're a very big, much more diversified company than they were before. They're trading at a little over 11 times trailing earnings. You know, the, the company is, is cheap enough and diverse enough and generates enough cash and has enough cash that they can they can make a mistake here and still you know the, the downside is not that great the upside though is is actually pretty good and that's that's the point that i that yeah. i've made in the column about microsoft is that people are really dis, you know overly discounting things through the prism of what you know the, their kind of consumer you, experience with it just your sort of gut feeling do you think the stock goes anywhere this year yeah i i, I do think it does i think as windows 8 approaches i mean obviously if it's if they mess it up, you know, then it, it, there, yeah. there is some potential for downside, although not that much. And then if it's uh, it's well received, uh, and especially with with Rim kind of you know going away the dodo, you know, and you know this, this could be, become potentially the new uh, trusted you know, enterprise operating system. And so there's a vacuum there that they could fill at the very least. Maybe not the cool part of the, the the business, but a profitable niche. Yeah. Is there a sense they're really too late though on tablets and smartphones and working in that space? That, that's the point I kind of used a couple of Mark Twain quotes and they said, you know, they yeah. sort of never, you know, saw an opportunity that until it was too late to seize it. I mean, it's, you know, that that is a, a problem that they were they were late to the game and they've 
been serially late. I mean, they were, you know, they're very opportunistic once upon a time. Right. Bill Gates was a, you know, good businessman with a so-so product and he really latched on to the, the whole, you know, the PC thing and, you know, that's that's been their business, basically. But uh, I don't think that it's too late. I think that there's always room for uh, for another competitor. Uh, it's it's you know it's not a, a two horse race between Google and, and Apple mm -hmm. by any stretch of the imagination, especially since uh, you know enterprises want someone who's trustworthy and there there are innovations to be had and their, their products have, and the previews of Windows 8 have been well received and their consumer phones have been somewhat well received. I mean, so it's it's I don't I don't think it's too late at all. I think that's that's not true. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's interesting with the wrap here. You know, Microsoft, one of these companies. You see a lot of these companies, competition someday comes and passes them and they never recover. Right. But Microsoft, they just keep going. Leave it there. Spencer Jacob, thank you, thank you very much.